Welcome to the Onward Podcast. This is your host, Emily Harmon. The Onward Podcast features authentic conversations on facing adversity and moving forward. Typically, each episode is an interview with a guest. This episode is a short solo cast, meaning I'm the only one talking, and I'm going to keep it shorter than a typical episode because I really would like you to make time, if you haven't already, to listen to last week's episode entitled An Authentic Conversation on Racism in America. That episode is a recorded Zoom call. The conversation was not an easy conversation. We all left our comfort zones, and it's amazing how people opened up on the call to people they don't even know, especially considering that talking about these experiences brought back the pain and the trauma. Some shared experiences they haven't shared in years. And summarizing the conversation just won't do it justice. You must listen with your own ears. In a past episode, I shared some actions that I'm taking to do my best to become part of the solution to end systemic racism and injustice in America. In this episode, I'm going to go a little deeper. And to be honest, it isn't easy for me. I'm way out of my comfort zone. It seems like no matter what I say, someone's going to critique me. Someone won't like what I have to say. You've seen it. There are critics everywhere. And I've been a critic too. I'm sure we all have at some point. But like you, I've been watching the news. And in order to understand the present situation, I recognize the need to better understand history. I need to better understand history. I want to understand the historical context of what got us to this point in our history. In high school and college, I really wasn't much of a history buff, but I'm learning and gaining a broad understanding now of the injustice in America, much better understanding than I had before. I've had deeper conversations and therefore deeper learning, and I feel like I have a better understanding of today's outrage. As I've learned by hosting this podcast, when we listen to stories, we tend to cast ourselves in the shoes of the main character or in the case of this podcast, of the guest. I watched the documentary 13th and the movie Just Mercy, and I cast myself in the character of Black people, and I can see that institutional injustice has not been eliminated in this country, not even close. I've read a lot of articles by Black people expressing frustration that white people are reaching out to them to ask what they can do or to say that they're sorry. I've done that. Have you? Again, I need to put myself in their shoes to understand their frustration. They're frustrated with white people full of forgiveness, of wokeness, asking black people to explain or forgive them for not understanding, asking black people to facilitate their awareness. I've done that. And some of us are doing this before we do any soul searching or homework of our own. I'm looking in the mirror and pledging to do better in my own sphere of influence. I'm not giving a hollow pledge to do better. I'm not going to publish a few podcast episodes on racism and injustice in America and then check it off my to-do list as having done my part. I struggle with, why now, Emily? It's not like you didn't know there was racism in America. Why did it take you so long to want to be part of the solution? Why did it take you so long to pay attention. Perhaps you've asked yourself that question as well. I can't answer that question for you. I'll attempt to answer it for me. Have you ever known about an issue, but since it doesn't impact you directly, you don't do anything about it? You have enough issues on your plate. Work is challenging. You're raising a family. Your marriage is struggling. One of your parents is sick. You're coaching your children's soccer teams. You can't take on one more thing. That was my life at one point. And then my marriage ended and I became a single parent. I had to make room for one more thing in my life. And I quickly learned what it's like to be a single parent. I knew other single parents and I thought I understood what it would be like, but until it impacted me directly, I didn't pay much attention. And I'm not at all saying that's right. I'm saying that it is. I'm saying that that's what happened. Other examples might be that you hear about cancer, yet you're not active about addressing the issue because you or someone close to you doesn't have cancer. When my mom was diagnosed with cancer, 
I walked in the breast cancer three-day for five years in a row to raise funds for breast cancer research. I'm not saying this is always the case, but for many of us, there's more of a desire or a calling to raise our voice for a cause and get more involved when the cause touches us in some way. I hear about people suffering from COVID-19, but it's not impacting me directly and I'm not in the at-risk category, so I don't pay as much attention to it. We all have biases. If I'm not aware of the barriers others face, I'm not going to see them and I won't be as motivated to remove them. In this instance, the topic of injustice in America due to race wasn't impacting me directly, so I didn't pay attention to it. There's a term for that, white privilege. And I recognize that this term sometimes elicits defensiveness and misunderstanding among white people. For me, I accept the use of the term and I acknowledge that I have benefited from white privilege. Maybe it's the term white privilege that turns people off. If that's the case, let's not use the term. And I'll just say that I recognize that I've experienced both obvious and less obvious passive advantages because my skin is white. I think one of the ways we can all work together to move forward is to engage in difficult conversations. It's through these conversations that we learn to understand issues from more than just our point of view. One way to initiate difficult conversations is to read a book and discuss it. And that's what we're doing in the Onward Movement. I thought that was a great idea. And then I read an article entitled, When Black People Are in Pain, White People Read Books by Trey Johnson, a freelance writer on race, culture, and identity based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I put a link to the article in the show notes. Seeing that headline was like a punch in the gut. I read the article. Here's an excerpt. I'm 10 and watching my grandfather's back stiffen and shrink as an officer pulls us over on the way home from the mall. I'm 16, face down on the hood of a cruiser in Ewing, New Jersey. I'm 22 and sitting in the back of a car at night with my palms pressed against the driver's seat headrest in an empty lot off a feeder road outside Houston as two officers shine flashlight into our eyes. I'm 36 in a mainline Philadelphia neighborhood, crying in my car when an officer taps my window because someone in a nearby house has called about me. I'm 42 and watching the news of George Floyd, the latest racial killing unspool across TV and social media. And as I watch, I'm 10, 16, 22, 36, all over again, all at once. Johnson writes, when things get real, really murderous, really tragic, really violent or aggressive, my white, liberal, educated friends already know what to do. What they do is read and talk about their reading. What they do is listen and talk about how they listened. What they do is never enough. This isn't the time to circle up with other white people and discuss black pain in the abstract. He writes about how white people tend to take a slow route to meaningful activism, locked in familiar patterns, seemingly uninterested in really advancing progress. And Johnson writes, because I've seen it before, I know what happens next. Basically, he says, in a few weeks, we'll go back to normal until another injustice hits the news. Black Americans, he writes, receive an endless loop of injustice, and white Americans keep revisiting the same performance, a Broadway show that never closes. It just goes on hiatus now and then. Johnson writes, the right acknowledgement of black injustice, humanity, freedom, and happiness will be found in our earnest willingness to dismantle systems that stand in our way, be they at our job, in our local or in our social network, our neighborhood associations, our family, or our home. In other words, in my words, it starts right here. It starts with me. It starts with you. It starts with us. In the Onward Movement, we are starting a discussion of the book, White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism by Robin D'Angelo. The participants in the discussions we've been having in the Onward Movement surrounding race and injustice are Black and white, men and women. 
They're uncomfortable discussions for all of us. And in my opinion, these discussions are necessary for us to figure out how we can move forward. The discussions help us open our eyes and see the issues from other points of view, to see the issues in our own neighborhoods, and to take action. We are not going to read the book and be done. I've mentioned to some of my friends that I'm reading this book and asked them to join in the discussion. Some of them have responded that they won't read the book. They tell me they're offended by the title. I felt a little offended by the title of the article that I just read excerpts from about white people reading books, but I read the article to try to understand. The foreword of this book states, White Fragility is a vital, necessary, and beautiful book, a bracing call to white folk everywhere to see their whiteness for what it is and to seize the opportunity to make things better now. I admit I've been insulated from racial stress. Part of the issue for many white people is we don't see ourselves as racist. The author of White Fragility writes that our simplistic definition of racism, which is intentional acts of racial discrimination committed by immoral individuals, that that simplistic definition engenders a confidence that we're really not part of the problem and that our learning is complete. And so engagement with others on the topic tends to stop and then learning doesn't continue. So she calls for a different definition of racism. She doesn't like the fact that we tend to simplify it and say that it's intentional acts of racial discrimination committed by immoral individuals. So I invite you to join the Onward Movement and our discussion of this book. We will discuss the book for three weeks, starting 12 July at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'll put a link in the show notes for the Onward Movement. But if you go to Facebook groups and search on Onward Movement, you'll find it. The Onward Movement isn't based around racism and injustice. It's about becoming our authentic selves. And part of becoming our authentic selves is engaging in difficult conversations and not letting the fear of judgment or fear of not fitting in stop us from being authentic. It's about making a positive impact in our communities. It's about creating space for others and helping people realize they're not alone. We are connected. Thank you for listening today. I'm very interested in hearing your feedback. Please feel free to email me or direct message me on social media. My contact information is in the show notes. And if you haven't already joined the Onward Movement, I'd love to see you there.